I was actually working with some clients that had um, what I felt was an internet addiction problem. And a lot of the people, the way they were treating the issue at the time was they were treating just the anxiety and depression. And we followed the case for about three years and there was really no movement in this child's care and to the point where the child wasn't attending school, various things. And I just kept being this clarion call where we really need to be treating the addiction at the same time we're treating the anxiety and depression. And a lot of the clinicians would say, well, let's just focus on the anxiety and depression. And so I thought, you know, there must be somebody else in the country that's actually specializing in the same things that I'm seeing in my practice and ended up uh, meeting Dr. Cash. And we decided, you know, there really is no place to send this person because most of the places are for drug and alcohol and there wasn't a program that would specialize in, in basically helping to treat co-occurringly both the anxiety and depression and uh, the internet excessive use. So we talked about opening our own program and that's kind of how it got started. We basically treat excessive problematic technology use, be it gaming, video gaming, computers, cell phones, etc., anything that's technology related behaviorally. The past three years where I had this problem, I always try solving it by myself. I knew I had a problem and I just didn't want any kind of help from others. I played games when I was very young. Um, I think my first game was when I was seven. I got a Game Boy. Throughout my childhood, I played games and uh, I was playing more and more and it became to a point where I was playing and it was just ruining the rest of my life, ruining my social life, um, my academics, uh, got fired from my work. My name is Brett. Basically, uh, for probably 15 years, I was on the computer all the time. I mean, it, it had sort of replaced my social life, um, replaced my goals, everything. It really taken over my life. I didn't know how to clean a bathroom. I didn't know how to cook basic things. I didn't know how to do all these things, and it was embarrassing to ask for help. I mean, here I was, 28, when I came here, and I didn't, I mean, it was, every any 12-year-old probably knows how to do some of these things, and I didn't, because I had been online all the time. So one of the first pillars of our program is that they're, they're abstinent when they're here. So they won't have access to technology as far as their computer or an iPad or a netbook. Their uh, cell phones are also put away and they agree to, you know, kind of be abstinent from technology for at the minimum of 45 days. We cook and eat together and socialize together and um, laugh and talk and engage and do all those types of things because oftentimes if they've been using technology excessively, they've been in the room on the computer the entire time and not necessarily engaging with others in their social environment. My dad told me, you know, I've lose, lost like three years of my life playing video games and I need to come here and just be open to try anything. My idea was just go here and get through the 45 days and go back to Texas and keep playing. But I guess after a week, I, my mentality kind of changed and I wanted to fix the problem and, you know, have a life. What I get a lot from parents is, wow, you really actually understand what we've been going through. I've tried to tell so many clinicians, I have talked about this problem, and nobody seems to listen to me, they don't take me seriously, they just think it's just a game. But if they could see what's happening to my child, they would know this is more than just somebody spending some passive time online for an hour or two. Whatever digital technology they're using, in singularly or in combination, it's that that's giving them a high, it's that that they turn to and get obsessed with and go into withdrawal if they are denied access to it. And in their obsession with it, they begin, their, their lives begin to narrow down more and more and more to that space in front of the computer screen. Addiction to a video game is usually, there's an underlying reason for that. And so for me, um, it was, a lack of connection with my family. Oftentimes somebody who's truly reached the level of addiction, they're not necessarily the first ones to go, hey, I've got a problem and I want to quit. It's usually somebody else saying, are you seeing, connecting all the dots and saying, this has really gone out of control for you. We 
employ parents, partners, spouses, whoever can team up with uh, the person that's struggling with excessive use and our team so that we can put in a good plan in place for some recovery to occur. Now that I'm off technology more, my brain does rest a lot more. I'm able to have more, more deep thoughts and to really just, uh, just be happy with my inner peace. And um, I can feel my brain functioning a lot better too now um, because I, I have the times where I'm just alone with my thoughts and it, it really is a good feeling after so many years of just clicking to different websites all the time, getting on different games. I mean, my, my brain would just always be going a million miles per hour and I didn't know how to stop except for whenever I would lay in bed and fall asleep. <laughs> so I would say, you know, if you think you really have a problem, just go look for help, like restart. I would just say go right now before it's too late and you're down bottom, rock bottom. <laughs>